and all of that and what to expect at the Open. Stan Shamu joining us from IG in Melbourne. Stan, good to see you there. Yeah, just in terms of China, we should point out, obviously, it falling 5% last week, 2% on Friday. Worries about those money market rates spiking up close to those levels seen back in the, the, the credit crunch panic of, of June. PBOC stepping in. I mean, what do you expect today? Yeah, it's been an absolutely awful run for, uh, uh, for China. I think they were down for nine sessions in a row, and this was really the worst uh, performance or uh, losing streak since 1994. Uh, of course, it's always about the interbank rates in China. I think on Friday they actually spiked to about 10% uh, before pulling back and closing in that 7.5-ish uh, sort of mark. I think uh, that the main thing to take away is that this is just a seasonal uh, sort of uh, fiscal tightening of uh, conditions in, in China whereby uh, the government draws down its uh, uh, deposits with uh, the central bank and then it pushes them into uh, uh, companies uh, with public entities with uh, deposits in uh, uh, commercial banks and in turn uh, the, the PBOC actually goes in and uh, uh, draws down uh, liquidity from some of uh, these uh, commercial banks to really uh, pull liquidity out of the system. So it's really very seasonal at the moment and I think a lot of analysts are starting to realise that uh, perhaps it's not something that they should be too, uh, too alarmed about. Uh, of course the PBOC has always said as well it's always ready to step in uh, when conditions look like they're tightening and of course this 300 billion uh, renminbi uh, injection which is about 49 billion US dollars uh, over the weekend should have some sort of an impact today uh, I think uh, it's a situation whereby a lot of finalists will be expecting China to uh, to bounce after that uh, prolonged uh, losing streak uh, and of course this would be positive for for the rest of uh, uh, the, the Asian region. I think um, ultimately uh, the current situation in China is uh, bearish for the for the short term sort of uh, end of the curve. But from for, from a longer term perspective, I think it's still uh, well intact and uh, very solid indeed. So uh, I think those reforms that were recently announced as well will continue to have an impact uh, on China. And uh, eventually, I think this should add to a sort of positive momentum for Chinese markets and then ultimately feed through to the rest of the Asian region. Um, just bring some viewers some news on Northern Star Resources as well, uh, Stan, that we're just getting through. Uh, NST is the ticker code for Northern Star. Uh, Northern Star saying it's going to buy the plutonic gold mine in WA from Barrick for $25 million. So just some news there with regards to some of those gold stocks, which of course have had a, a shocking year given gold is down something like 30%. Although it was interesting to see that little rebound on Friday. What did you make of that? Yeah, I think the, 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 yeah, the relationship between gold and uh, the, the US dollar versus the yen is always in, uh, interesting. Uh, it's always had an inverse relationship. Uh, and I think if you actually remember last week, the dollar yen pushed through that 104 mark. And as a result, uh, we did see gold uh, continue to plunge lower. Uh, I think this morning we've seen uh, uh, the dollar yen drop back below 104. And as a result, we've got, uh, the, uh, we've got gold back just above that 1200 uh, 1200 an ounce mark so uh, potentially that US dollar weakness despite better than expected GDP data has really been uh, a catalyst for a catalyst for a bit of a, a gold recovery uh, at the same time if we manage to see uh, some sort of physical buying uh, kick in potentially because of seasonality issues then uh, maybe this would be positive for gold as well in the short term uh, but at the moment I think it's going to continue to find buyers in that region which, which is uh, around that 1185 to 87 mark right near uh, June's lows which was uh, 1181 so I think uh, a lot of uh, investors feel a bit more comfortable buying it or accumulating at these levels uh, and as a result I think that's why gold's uh, seen a little bit of a bounce uh, early in Asia and, uh, and of course uh, uh, just on the back of that uh, US dollar weakness heading into the end of US trade on Friday. Uh, there is a list a mile long of stocks trading ex-dividend today. Uh, how's that going to affect the open do you think? Yeah, our open call at the moment is actually relatively flat, so that's at about 5263 uh, from Friday's close. Uh, but we've already taken into consideration the, the uh, dividend that's coming out of the market, which is uh, around nine points. So we've got stocks like uh, Stockland, um, Transurban, all trading ex-div today. So uh, there, there should be a little bit of um, choppy trade earlier on. I think uh, the, the situation in the local market will only even out once we get um, uh, China uh, back online and trading, and this should be the most significant lead for uh, for, the, for Australia today. Just take into consideration as well that Japan is actually closed for uh, the emperor's birthday, so there's limited leads uh, from that front, and of course heading into the 
uh, a key uh, festive week, I suppose, with uh, Christmas on Wednesday, uh, then we do expect to just see relatively light volume. So any moves, uh, be it higher or lower, are likely to be exaggerated by the lack of volume. Uh, and of course, uh, we just need to continue to look out for some of those uh, uh, iron ore names, which are, are, are well um, leveraged to China. Uh, and of course, there have been some mixed comments or reviews from analysts with some feeling that it's a good time to get into iron ore names. Uh, whilst uh, ANZ actually came out and said uh, they, they expect uh, the big iron ore miners to go through a rough, rough time, particularly because they, they forecast iron ore to drop 7.5% in 2014. So there's a lot of mixed uh, talk about uh, some of these miners, uh, but BHP's ADR is actually pointing down 0.7% today. So perhaps we might see a pullback in uh, the likes of Fortescue, which had a, a pretty big run last week as well. So it's, it's going to be a very choppy trade. And it's really up to China whether or not we can uh, push higher in today's session when, without any local d data due out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Stan, as always, thank you so much. Cheers, buddy. Stan Shamu there from IG in Melbourne.